hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening um, to everyone. This is Olivia Powell. I'm a dancer with the Diablo Ballet. And tonight on our Zoom call chat, um, I am talking to our lovely marketing director and school manager for the Diablo Ballet School and the Diablo Ballet Company, Chrissy Gray. Oh, <laughs> yay. <laughs> So thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me tonight. Oh, thank um, you for doing this. Yeah, well, of course. Well, you know, it's always something very interesting that, you know, when people come and see the performances at, you know, in public, at our venue, all, all the dancers on stage, they don't necessarily get a lens into the people that make it happen. The people, you know, that put all the work in, do all the marketing, um, all of that extra work that, you know, you're not seeing at the performance. So it's super important to, you know, showcase those people, uh, you know, in our organization and, and have our audience get to know you as well. So <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> so Chrissy, let's start from the beginning. Where are you from? <laughs> I'm from here, born and raised in Northern California, actually in Walnut Creek. And yeah. have you stayed in the Walnut Creek area for the majority of your life or? Um, I went down to LA to go to college. Um, I went to Loyola Marymount and then I ended up staying because um, I got a really great job kind of out of college working for a movie distribution company. Okay. And so I stayed um, for about 10 or 11 years. I met my husband, we got married. Um, and then I decided when my daughter was about one, one and a half, that I really wanted to raise her up in Northern California and, you know, have her be with my parents and kind of, you know, I was feeling a little safer since it was right after 9-11 and, right. and we we're living close to LAX. Um, right. And so we decided just to kind of make the decision and we moved back up here. Oh. Um, so for that time I was down in LA and it was great. Um, but um, I'm kind of, yeah. A Northern California girl at heart. Yeah, at heart. And then yeah. we're, and we're back here. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was your major? I actually uh, went in, I didn't know. Um, I went in as psychology and then I switched to communication arts because I had no idea what I wanted to do. And then I was taking so many dance classes because um, I had always danced growing up and I ended up taking so many dance classes that they were like you have enough credits to be a double major. Awesome. So I ended up graduating with a um, communication arts and then dance degree. Amazing. Yeah. And where did you grow up dancing here in Walnut Creek? Yeah, I grew up dancing um, actually at Kappa California Academy of Performing Arts, which is in Moraga. Okay. Um, and so I danced there probably from the time I think I was eight or nine when I started, and I danced, um, you know, through high school. I taught for a while. Um, and, uh, there, and it was really, it was kind of my, my extracurricular, like, I just loved it. Yeah, for um, sure. So when you went to college and you were, you know, pursuing this dance major, mm -hmm. were, was your focus, um, you know, towards a professional track with dance or was it more of like supplemental to the rest of your education? Yeah, I never really wanted to dance professionally. I just loved it so much. And it was such like a release for me to go and, and dance. And I just, I've always just loved taking class and being in class. Yeah. Um, and so it was really just this, I picked the school because it had a good dance department and I could take everything that I wanted to take. Right. Um, and I took everything that I could, African, contemporary, modern, jazz, yeah. ballet, everything. Cool. Um, and, uh, and I just, yeah, I just loved it. And like I said, had so many credits that they were like, here's your major. I think I had to throw in a kinesiology class, which I actually ended up really enjoying. Yeah, so. there you go. And you're like, oh, I have this in my pocket as well, you know? Right. Right. So, so after you graduated, you mentioned you worked for uh, the movies. I did. Um, I got really lucky. I um, got a job um, kind of temping and then I was the receptionist for Gramercy Pictures, um, which was a mov movie distribution company. They still kind of release titles under that name. Um, and it was a really small office uh, in Beverly Hills. 
and I ended up uh, getting the job from my future mother-in-law oh who was there. She was the head of publicity, and it just really allowed me to like learn the whole industry. The um, the president of the company was just amazing, and he let me sit in on meetings even from the start. Yeah. Um, and so it was really, really a fun industry to be in, especially in my twenties. And so I worked up kind of from receptionist um, to the assistant to the head of marketing. And then I ended up running the in-theater marketing department. Unbelievable. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. So it was kind of one of those situations where you had been involved with the arts your whole life mm -hmm. and then graduating. Seg it was like kind of a natural segue into a different medium, but still affiliated with right. the arts. Exactly. Exactly. And I just kind of, I really enjoyed the marketing end of it and the special events. And mm -hmm. I got to work a lot of movie premieres and press junkets and all kinds of things like that, which was really um, just a, a pretty amazing experience to be yeah. able, able to do. Yeah. Sounds like one of those types of jobs that's like a once in a lifetime thing and you just learn and like soak up all of this information and, um, yeah. you know, yeah, experience. And yeah, great. it was really, it was fun. And it was, you know, working at the bigger studios, I know people don't even get to see the different departments, but because I was able to see the different departments, I really got to kind of a, a little bit choose kind of the direction. And I ended up picking marketing to kind of focus on. And, and so that was really, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't think that if I had ended up someplace else, I would have necessarily ended up going into marketing or doing right. special events or which kind of segued me into, you know, kind of what I'm doing now. So wow. that's yeah. amazing. Isn't that so um, neat where like yeah. one, one event just kind of launches the rest of your path, you know, yeah. it, 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 it really is. So yeah, I consider myself very fortunate to be able to, to have worked in that industry. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So when you um, came back to Walnut Creek, was that kind of a time where, were, like, career-wise, were you able to segue into, like, the next thing very smoothly? Did you have relationships and, like, a foundation here um, to be able to kind of continue that work? Or did it, did you have kind of a time in between? I actually, uh, when we moved, the biggest thing of me not wanting to move was to give up my job. And so they allowed me to keep my job, and I telecommuted. So I ended up going down to LA like once a month and kind of when my boss was on the East Coast. So we would kind of meet in LA and do our meetings and whatnot. And then um, I would go back home. I did that for about a year, but it was just really hard. My daughter was really young yeah. and she was, you know, two, two and a half. And it was just really hard to keep like the commuting aspect of it. Um, and so I ended up, um, leaving that job and I took some time off and I was just a mom for a while. Um, and I did like little part-time contractor work here and there. Um, and then I kind of, when she was a little bit older and back in elementary school, started kind of looking for, um, another full-time job and went into corporate events. Um, wow. For a while, and then found myself back um, in the arts, um, working for a musical theater company. That's so, so cool. Yeah. yeah. So cool. What, so I mean, it, it worked, worked itself out. But. Yeah. Yeah, and it's so nice that you had that time with your daughter when she was so mm -hmm. young. Those years are so, like, yeah. so special, you know? Yes. Um, so that's really wonderful that you, you were able to pursue your career, it, and then take time to really, you know, be with your family as well. And then, and then work again, you know, that's yeah. really, a lot it of people. Was. It worked out nice. I think at the time I was a little like, Oh, I don't know how all this is going to go down, but <laughs> what am I doing? I know, right? <laughs> but, yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Great. And what was the musical theater company that you ended up working for? Um, so it was a Diablo theater company and they performed at the Lesher Center. Um, and it was actually very funny. Uh, my mom, uh, and dad were really involved with that theater company. And so I used to perform with them when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, they kind of, when I moved back and I, you know, one thing led to another, I started kind of consulting and doing marketing for them. 
Um, and I was with the company for about five years and uh, ended up being the managing director and kind of running it. So it was, um, it was fun and it was, it was neat because I knew a lot of the players and I knew the history because of my parents and my mom used to perform and, and, you know, I can look at like pictures and like I'm nine and one of the cast photos. And, oh my you know, gosh, just, so cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, that's so nice to bring that family history back in. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And so you were there five years. That's a good chunk of time to be working for one organization. So yeah. is, it, is it a small, it's a smaller company, correct? Or yeah, it was very small. I mean, there, our staff was, you know, two, three people, um, depending, I think like at the biggest, it was maybe like five. Um, and, um, they produced, we produced, um, like four musicals a year, two big musicals a year. And then we had a children's program for a while and we would do some teen productions and children's productions. And, uh, but it was, you know, like a typical nonprofit or arts organization on a shoestring budget. And, but yet, you know, trying to make it all work with doing the latest and greatest productions and performing at the lecture and everything else. But the company ultimately didn't survive um, it went out of business after, I think, like, I, I can't even remember how many years. It was a lot of years. And so um, it was uh, it was pretty sad when that happened. But, um, you know, hard in this, you know. Yeah, the arts. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. you know, the, the climate of, you know, always trying to, you know, support. And then, right. you know, if the economy goes down, then, you know, the arts are usually oftentimes the first to feel that. Exactly. Um, oh, that's so, too bad. Yeah. Um, but that sounds like it was a really wonderful experience. Um, it was. It was really fun. I made, you know, I mean, it was just for me to be able, like I said, to have like the history and to be able to be kind of a part of it. And I felt for like a lot of it, I was kind of doing it a little bit you know, for my mom, because it was yeah. like, she had known one of the founders of the company. And, and so it was, you know, it was kind of really a very family kind of oriented thing. And, and it was fun. And it eventually led me to Diable Ballet. So, you know, it's like none of this, everything was, I see it as a progression. And, there right? was, you know, yeah, at the musical theater company ended up bringing you to Diablo Ballet. And what was that actual situation and progression? Like. So, um, Lauren had called me, um, probably like about, well, I've been with Diablo Ballet for about five years. So it was probably like five and a half years ago. Um, Lauren had, was interested in the building that Diablo Theater, um, owned, which was the firehouse. Uh -huh. And, um, she was interested in studio space and company space. And, um, at the time it probably just wasn't in the cards at the time and I was I kind of knew I was leaving and so she was like and we immediately hit it off yeah. I immediately with Lauren and um she was like well if you ever need a job you know let me know oh. and then like literally like a couple months later I'm like hi I need my <laughs> remember me yeah, that's awesome. you told me I could have a job <laughs> um so uh so it was funny and then I mean what's even crazier is then we flash forward four years and we're opening a school in the same building I, so, I didn't I didn't realize that that was that building that's amazing. totally full circle <laughs> and I grew up in that building so I've oh. been in that building since I was probably like I don't know seven. Oh my gosh so you know it better than anybody <laughs> That is so... All the secret rooms. Yeah, I know. Well, it's so funny. Like, in the back studio, or like, behind the downstairs studio, there's this whole other area of the building that I only went to once. And like the costume like, shop and the scene yeah. shop and everything? Yeah. And it just keeps going. I'm like, there's yeah. more rooms. <laughs> it's very deceiving, that building. It is. I know. It looks like it's a small building, but it's really not. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> I know. Awesome. And what's really funny is that... Um, Rena Wilson and Renee Deweese, who own the building, who run Performing Academy, I've known them forever and a day as well. And um, they, Rena just showed me a secret room that none of us knew about. It's upstairs off the Neverland room, through the prop room, and there was like, they moved a bookcase and there was like a secret door. Oh my gosh! 
<laughs> so see, I, I, I mean, I know the building, but apparently not all of it. Always things to learn, right? <laughs> yes. Always. So now we have a secret, secret prop room. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> I know. And uh, you know, some of our audience members might not know what goes into like marketing for a production. So normally, um, you know, after the program has been decided what is like the steps that you take building up to opening night um I mean pretty much once like the season set and we've set the pricing and um kind of all the subscriber information for the season um we'll do the season brochure we'll do press releases um, to kind of announce everything and then program by program as the program approaches um, we'll start working usually I try to get the press release out like you know six six to eight weeks before um, and uh, to start kind of promoting it um, and then we'll start doing um, an advertising buy planning all that out booking advertising we don't do a ton but we still do do some newspaper um, and some online advertising um, and do that posters, postcards, the direction of the art. Wow. Um, and then um, kind of just keep, um, you know, we're great because we have a guest services person that helps me out and kind of does a lot of, um, you know, uh, working with groups or trying to uh, do some discounting to get new people into the theater. I mean, the the key is always that you have the subscriber base and Diablo Ballet is incredibly lucky because our subscribers really come back. Mm -hmm. And we typically don't lose subscribers each year, which is normally what an arts organi organization does, we gain. Yeah, and so it's pretty amazing and so it's just cultivating and continuously kind of feeding that to have that base and then trying to get a younger audience in um and kind of you know introduce them to ballet and kind of keep them coming back so it's a lot of just kind of you know emails and phone calls on occasion and and what can we do to broaden our audience base right um and then, you know, we're, we're kind of doing all that as we're, you know, planning the actual program, the playbill, and then and planning what else we're going to do with the performances. If we have some sort of special event um, that's tied in with the performance weekend, you know, what, what fun perks can we do that's kind of different that'll get people and, you know, wanting to come to the theater and wanting to, why they would pick Diablo Ballet over a different maybe ballet company. Right. Um, that's right. also performing, you know, nearby. So, yeah. yeah. And that's the thing about the Bay Area is there are a ton of yeah. dance companies that were here. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, Diablo Ballet is just such a unique um, company in itself, I feel like. So yeah. um, that's really wonderful that our subscribers are so loyal to us. Yes. Um, and yeah, it makes a huge difference for sure. And, you know, Lauren's very hands-on with um, the audiences, and I think, you know, all of us try to be as well. So even though, you know, I don't have a lot to do with what you guys are doing on stage, um, the whole front of house is, like, where we're really, you know, we're very visible. Yeah. Um, you know, they can contact us directly. Um, and I think that that makes it a, kind of for a, a special they feel like they know everyone and then yeah. you know, dancers come out after the performance and, and they get that piece of it. And so I think that's really kind of what, you know, we try to set ourselves apart by making yeah. it really a personal experience that we, that we know these people that we know our audiences. Yeah. Cool. Huh. So special. So fun. <laughs> I want to um, just kind of shift a little bit. Um, and so we just closed actually officially today. I know our very first school year with the Diablo Ballet. What a school year it was! I know. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> uh, I am happy we got through it. No, I'm just teasing. I mean, it, it's just it was kind of like you start the school and you have all these like, oh my gosh, I hope we have students and. <laughs> And you get students and then you're building it and it's like oh my gosh this is really going well and then you know we hit you know COVID and 
and we kind of had to flip on a switch to virtual and it was kind of a we're gonna have to make this happen and we made it happen and I'm just thankful I mean you guys were amazing um, that the faculty was able just to be like here's how we're gonna do zoom have fun <laughs> Um, and, uh, and that the parents were really supportive and that the students were really, I mean, um, it's been, it's been better than I think we expected it, um, when, when March was happening and we weren't really sure what was going on, yeah. but it's been, um, it's been really great. And I, and I think that, um, the faculty, you included, um, <laughs> especially you with all the littles, um, have been a uh, really amazing teaching on Zoom and able to give all of our students like personal attention, which I think is pretty amazing doing it all, you know, on the screen. So. <laughs> it was definitely a learning experience that's really yes. um, Yeah, that, like just transitioning from being able to be in the same space physically right. and then like how are we still going to get these physical things through um you know two dimensionality so but yeah. none of us would have been able to have been successful with those classes without the platform and the support that you and lauren and rebecca were able to provide for all of us so um you know it's yeah absolutely amazing um amazing working for you guys <laughs> Um, so well, we're lucky to have you. Oh, <laughs> very in, lucky. Oh no! <laughs> in the first place, when um, how so? How long before the launch of the school were you like developing the idea of of having a school? Um, it was probably a year. I mean, I think it was something that Lauren had always wanted to have a school associated with the company. That was like her dream. Uh, how else has your life shifted as far as your role as the marketing director with the company? Um, what other kind of elements and aspects, you know, have kind of uh, changed? Well, um, I think my focus has primarily gone to the school. And so I have not, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously still involved with the, with the company staff and we're working on the season brochure, which will um, come out next week. And we are, um, you know, doing touches and e-blasts with our audience and patrons to keep them involved. And so I'm involved in all that, but my focus really switched to the school. Right. right. Um, just from an admin perspective of kind of getting it all going and relaying information. And I'm pretty hands-on. I think it's kind of funny. We have this school at DiabloBallet.org email and everyone emails and says, hi, Chrissy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, I don't even, you know, at like this point, it's like, but, um, you know, I try to be really hands on because I know that this has been, you know, I mean, for the start of the school so that they felt supported, but then also through all of this, because it's just been kind of crazy and, um, and being able to help the families and, and you know, everyone's kind of str struggling at first with their schedules and, right. and how they were going to make everything work from working from home and, you know, and and having families at home. Right, right. So, a little bit more work up front, creating the plants, but less work in the future. Right, the exactly. Yeah. And especially since it changes so quickly, yeah. it's like you don't even, I mean, you're behind the eight ball, like, you know, whenever somebody changes something or the county changes something. So it's like, you just have to, I mean, we're just trying to stay ahead of the game and being really proactive with, with what we can do. Yeah. um you know given the parameters so wonderful well you're amazing um i think that uh, you know everyone's been doing an amazing job and um and i feel that this is such an important um conversation to share because i don't know if our audiences necessarily know like all of these things that we're kind of working out and smoothing over um you know especially given our current climate um right so uh Thank you so much for sharing all of all of your wisdom and your your <laughs> gifts with us. <laughs> You're so appreciated. We love you. <laughs> well, thank you. I mean, I, I I I do it with a lot of help, and we have a really great company, and 
the staff is amazing and the faculty is amazing. And, and so it makes it, I mean, all of it, a, just a pure pleasure. And I, I don't think I realized like how much, I knew I was gonna be involved with the school, but I don't think how much, I, I realized how much I really love being involved with the school. Yeah. So. yeah. That's it's cool. a very special school. Anything you want to say to everybody before we sign off? Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know. Just uh, thank you to, uh, you know, all of our school families, like I mentioned, for being amazing as we uh, all uh, get through this together and to, you know, our patrons. And I mean, I know there's nothing more than the company dancers want to do than to get back on stage. <laughs> Um, and so we're really looking forward to be able to, you know, start sharing, um, you know, our art with, um, with everyone again. Um, and so it'll be, uh, it'll happen and, uh, we'll just be patient until then, but one day at a time. Exactly. <laughs> Doing the best that we can. <laughs> well, I, I know, right? One day at a time. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Chrissy. Thank and you, Olivia. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, so much for tuning in today. Um, we appreciate your continued support of the Diablo Ballet and the Diablo Ballet School. Um, and we just hope that all of you are staying safe and healthy. And we cannot wait to see you in person one day. So, <laughs> and we will, we will just keep going. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Bye.